Let's go to the hotline right now. We're joined by Adam Brennerman. Uh, you saw him play at Penn State. You saw him play at UMass, former assistant coach at uh, Arizona State, also at ESPN. You can see him. And next up with Adam is blowing up there on social media, getting college coaches left and right. Uh, I know he had Tom Herman recently, among others out there. Uh, let's, let's go straight to the hotline. Adam, good morning, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing well. Appreciate you having me on. Thanks, man. So uh, how did this uh, whole podcast world start for you? How did you kind of go down that journey? Yeah, good, good question. So uh, it, it kind of came out of the blue. I mean, as you just said, I, I was a five-star recruit in high school. I played college football at Penn State and UMass and then uh, retired before the draft, failed some physicals. You know, the old story about didn't, didn't make it because of my knee, right? Everyone says that. Uh, <laughs> um, spent a couple of years coaching. And then really uh, after, after coaching at Arizona State, I was just thinking that I had all this background in college football and I felt like there wasn't really a voice that had all these experiences of coaching playing, recruiting, all that kind of stuff. And I was young and I'm, and, and that I could create content and kind of build this media career around it. And, uh, I went all in on it like a year ago. It's been really cool. It's been fun. It's grown a lot. The podcast has been great. As you mentioned, the head coach part's really cool. Like to get head coaches to sit down for an hour and talk about their program is hard. It's hard to get coaches to do anything, let alone sit down for an hour. So, uh, I'm just trying to get Jimbo Fisher on now, man. That, that's that, 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 that's like the, that's the big get for me next. Well, I, I want to ask you about A&M here because I know you, you actually spoke about them recently. But one other point, you tweeted not long ago that you wish you would have had a bigger profile on social media as a player because it opens up so many doors. Yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, a lot of times athletes, players all think that when they're done playing, they, they'll become media personalities, right? So many athletes want to be in media. I mean, so many. It, it's, a, it's probably the most popular, you know, career trajectory for guys when they stop playing but you have way more leverage and way more credibility when you're currently playing to start your media career i mean so many so much easier to get views to get eyeballs all that kind of stuff while you're currently playing uh but a lot of guys do what i did and wait until you're done playing to start doing media i wish i would have done it when i was still playing created the content built the following up when I was playing, I was talking to, I was telling my buddy, Mike Kosicki, one of my close friends plays for the Patriots, former Dolphins tight end. And I was saying, I said, dude, if you just started a YouTube channel and posted your daily, your daily, daily life on YouTube, you'd have millions of subscribers wanting to see what a day in the NFL is like. But what guys do is they wait till they're done playing to do it. And now no one's quite as interested anymore. Once you stop playing. <laughs> So I know you had a, a series recently, five surprising teams that could win their conference, and you put Texas A&M as one of those teams. Give me your reasons kind of behind it, why, why you are potentially high on A&M. I mean, I think a, a few reasons. Obviously, last season was, was disappointing, but there's so much talent in College Station that at some point it's got to come together, right? At some point, the, the, the talent has to – has to come together. The, the number one thing I see when, when I look at A&M right now is I, I believe, although it, was, although it was a controversial hire, I think Bobby Petrino coming in uh, as the OC is the right pick. And I think it's going to revamp that offense and give it the kind of give it the, um, the new, new life it needs. You know, you look at what Petrino did at Arkansas, at Louisville, and, and now the players he has to work with, way more talent than he had at Arkansas and Louisville. Uh, the, the ability to, to score fast, to play fast, to throw the ball over the yard. I think that offense uh, will, will be the differentiator for Texas A&M. I'm excited to see what Petrino does. Again, it was a controversial hire. I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, Bobby Petrino's going to A&M? Um, but I, I'm, I'm excited to see, to see how it all plays out. I understood why, because I think even here locally, when it first came out, like when it first was, you know, reported by Billy Lucci that it was a possibility. I'm like, but then the more investigation I did into it, the more conversations I had, you can talk yourself in and out of stuff. But I think it really makes yeah. sense for Jimbo to bring in a guy that he will believe in. Because if you brought in a young guy, no he's going to take over, right? It's a great point. It's a great point. I mean, especially knowing how involved Jimbo wants to be in that, in that side of the ball, right? I mean, it, it's hard to take the hands off it if you're the head coach. To bring in a guy who's seen so much football – arguably seen just as much or more football than Jimbo uh, is, is a, is a great hire. And I think it's a guy that players will respect right away that that's coached so many great players, um, you know, and then, and then you see what Connor can do at quarterback. I think that, I think that that fit there for, for uh, Bobby Petrino is going to be really good and for what he wants to do in his offense. Um, and I think even, even the receiver um, uh, Smith, the, the Smith kid who missed a lot of last season, like, I think he's going to have a great year. I think there's a lot of pieces there that, that Petrino necessarily hasn't always had when he's been a head coach. Now he has more talent than ever. 
Anaya Smith, Evan Stewart, Noah Thomas, uh, Moose Muhammad. They got a lot of guys there. Yep. Let, let, let's go to a team that you know quite well, Penn State. A lot of expectations this year. Is this the year that James Franklin Franklin gets it done? I mean, there is as much excitement around this Penn State program that, than I can even remember. In, in my lifetime, there's so much excitement. I think for, for it to get done, two things need to happen. Uh, number one, the defense needs to play at the level it played last year. One of the biggest wins of the offseason in college football, I've been saying, has been Penn State keeping Manny Diaz as their defensive coordinator and not losing him to another to a to a head coaching job. So having Manny Diaz back at Penn State's huge. Number two, and it's the easy thing to say, Penn State season will ride on Drew Aller, their quarterback, and how well he plays. They, they have all the pieces on offense. They have one of the best running back rooms in the country with Katron Allen and Nick Singleton. Uh, the offensive line, having Olu Fashanu, who would have been a top 10 pick, come back to school at left tackle and play left tackle for another season. If Drew Aller can take care of the football and if he can not play outside of the system, uh, Penn State's going to have a really good season. But it's funny that with as much expectation as Penn State has to have a quarterback who's never started a game before coming in to, to start his first season. It's a unique dynamic, and, uh, and I'm excited to see how it plays out. But I had Drew Aller on the podcast a few weeks ago. And talk about a dude for being 18 years old, 19 years old. I mean, the maturity, the excitement reminds me a lot of Christian Hackenberg when he went to Penn State and just the, the excitement, you know, when Hack walked on campus, there was so much excitement to see him play. Drew's facing the same thing, but I think he's got the right mindset about it. Remind me, who was your coach at Penn State? I played for Bill O'Brien for one year and Franklin for two years. So oh. I, I, I saw I saw the whole the whole gauntlet at Penn State, man. <laughs> so I, I worked with OB uh, for a few years, Bill O'Brien. Uh, when I say yeah. I worked with, I covered him in, in Houston. What did you think? Because, I mean, that first year, the, 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 his run at Penn State kind of really changed the way people look at him, especially coming off of the Joe Paterno years. Um, and what do you think about the coordinator slash head coach that he, he became? I love Bill O'Brien. I mean, he was really the reason I went to Penn State. You know, so when I was getting recruited, he he was he was just coming off of the, the his stint as the OC for the Patriots, right? And it was the year that I think they lost in the Super Bowl, but it was the year that Gronkowski and Hernandez had huge seasons, right? They were breaking records. So I was a tight end thinking I want to go play in that offense, right? So and I grew up near Pennsylvania, so I love Bill O'Brien. He was. He was a, a great coach, a great leader, just a great mentor for me, and, and a great. He he knew how to teach tight end play with the best of them. Uh, really, he gets he doesn't get enough credit for what he did at Penn State. I mean, holding that place together during one of the darkest times in college football history, uh, he should he deserves a lot of credit for keeping that place there for being the right leader during a really dark time. Um, he, he's a great offensive mind. The way he teaches quarterbacks the way he teaches the offense. I learned more football from him than I have from anyone during my career, uh, even just being with him for one year. So I'm excited to see what he does in New England. I'm, I'm glad he's back in New England. I just mentioned my buddy, Mike Kosicki, who's now playing for him in New England. Uh, I, I think it'll be a really good fit. I'm excited to see him back with, with Coach Belichick. I forget who we had on the show a couple of days ago. Somebody mentioned last week. Uh, it just takes one year to kind of change the narrative. Uh, and we're hoping yeah. that one year happens again for Texas A&M. They did it in 2020, but we hope it happens here in, in 2023. Florida State had that one year that kind of changed the narrative. How did they do it? I mean, I, I actually did a, did a tweet about this yesterday um, about, number one, obviously they did it because they got better players. They executed on the field. Their quarterback played really, really well, right? They got a quarterback that could lead a team and not turn the football over. but the whole Florida state dynamic is a great lesson for college football. I mean, when you, when you think about the current age of football, when it's win now, it's, 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 you know, we, we, we can't, we're, we're building fast. It's turn over your roster through the portal. Mike Norvell went eight and 20 eight and 13, I believe in his first 21 games. I mean, most, most coaches would be fired after the first two seasons winning eight games, especially at a place like Florida state. But what Florida state has that's unique is they have an incredible amount of alignment from the top to bottom in their administration, their president, their AD, their AD is not, not on the hot seat. He's, he gets time to, to make the right hire. So they had conviction that Norvell was the right hire at, at Florida state. And they gave him time to build his roster along with the, with, with the alignment from the administration. When that happens, eventually it's going to work, right? Norvell didn't have to do take short, shortcuts. He got time, turned his roster around, turned the culture around. And now in year three, uh, last year had a really good season. Now, I mean, you know, people are talking about them as a sleeper contender for the playoffs. So uh, I, I think it's a great lesson for college football that if you give, if you give people time and you, and you don't, it, you don't have to win in year one, right? You, you have time, build the culture and things can work out really well. The, the other thing I'll say is that Florida state has a lot of programs 
the commitment from the administration doesn't always equal what the expectation is, right? The expectation's higher than the commitment the administration gives them. At Florida State, they are, they, they've given him the resources, the money for the staff, the recruiting resources that he needs to, to build that program the right way. All right, last thing for you. Who's the best quarterback in the SEC? Who's the best quarterback in the Big Ten? Uh, best quarterback in the uh, best quarterback in the Big Ten. I'm going to have to go with JJ McCarthy. I think that I think that at the end of the day, when when you are able to take care of the football uh, the way the way he can, and and you're able to do things with your legs that he can, um, he can he does some special things. And then too with with that with that offense. I mean the, the offense that they don't ask him to do too much, right? They don't ask him to to play outside of the pocket that much. They don't ask him to. Um, to do too much with his legs, just enough to extend plays. Best quarterback in the SEC, I'm going to have to go with Jaden Daniels. I mean, I was with him at Arizona State. I think I think he's got potential to be top two, three quarterback drafted. Um, he's so athletic, such a big arm, uh, so much arm talent. He's accurate, and I, he's grown up so much from when I saw him at ASU to now at LSU. It's been impressive, and Brian Kelly's done a really good job with him. Adam, man, we appreciate it. Let's do it again during the season, all right? Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. Thank See you. Ya. Yeah, Adam Renham in there. Uh, check out Next Up with Adam. Uh, does a nice podcast there. Gets a lot of coaches to come on his show and breaks down a little college football.